Hello, I am Endlessness and welcome back to Final Fantasy 7 Ever Crisis and since we have gotten our big content drop for this week, in this video I want to give you a quick overview. First, level cap increase with level 80 now being this new max level and as I thought, they have essentially given us two level cap increases at once and because of that we can level up those new limit breaks twice so they can be level 3 now. They have also introduced new ca noble character memories and we already have these with Shiva and Leviathan so when most people saw these, me included, we feared that it'll be this new resource locked either to premium quests so it won't be farmable or behind a paywall in the store for people to spend money on to acquire them and it would be mostly whales obviously but when we level up a character to level 77, we unlock this new stream page and that's where we start seeing those new noble memories and we also need quite a lot of them if you check each node, but it's not just those new memories. For those 10 levels, we need around 200, 400 normal memories. It's a lot, but 400 if you want to level up those new limit breaks as well. On this last page, there are only two health branches where you need normal memories, normal character memories, not those new ones. The rest of these, all those other nodes, they are those new noble memories. And where do we get those noble memories? Those new Colosseum Towers. In each of them you get noble character memories, meaning if you clear all three of those towers you'll get the exact amount of those noble memories you need to max out every character. I already did two of those towers and all I can say is I am glad that these towers aren't overly difficult. I feared that they would make them very hard, that it would be this new very hard content for whales, but it's not the case at all. These are very relatively simple and on each B30 floor we have to fight a salmon, so it will be Ifrit, Shiva and Ramu on the right one. And also, each of those B30 battles has recommended 246,000 combat power. And when I saw that, I feared that this might be just as hard as those Summon EX2 battles, but now we are also restricted to being able to use only four specific characters and not our best team we can come up with. However, what I have also noticed is that you will really benefit if you pulled on half anniversary banners. Cloud got Ice Arknum and you have to fight Ifrit. Zag got Fire Arknum and you have to fight Shiva. And lastly, Glenn got War Arknum and you have to fight Ramu. And I am not sure I like this because not everyone pulled on those exclusive banners and now you have those three new towers with current final bosses being weak to exactly what we got in those exclusive banners. Sure, we have characters with similar elemental weapons so you can still beat those, but it might be just a little bit harder. But at least those battles are very doable and not overly difficult, bordering on impossible if you're not a whale. Also, those summon battles are nowhere near as hard as summon EX1 battles even. But also, by the way, I really like this new menu look for towers. It, it looks really cool, especially with the Seal Tower of Cetra. Then of course we have this Golden Bomb Rush event rerun which is most appreciated because with this new level cap increase it is the best and the fastest way to level up all your characters, which is something I 100% recommend you should do. We have this event for two and a half weeks so use this time to level up all your characters. Don't leave any of them behind because you might regret in the future. Even now we already have these new Colosseum Towers that require us to use all characters, even those we would normally never use. So this event makes leveling up a joke, especially when we have this new times 9 stamina boost on every battle. You can keep leveling up characters just with natural stamina, so slowly, but I really recommend not skipping any of the characters. Also, the event store is great with some gacha tickets and then we have 50 character memories for every character and 100 memory voucher and most importantly we also have quite a lot of gil we could get. For 3000 medals you can get 300,000 gil, so if you are going broke this is amazing. 
next week we'll get a second store but it'll retain the same currency though so the same medals so you can use all your stamina tonics and level up all your characters this week and you'll be able to use those medals that you have acquired to buy out the second store as well as for the battles it's the same thing we have unlocked battles with spooky balloon and then we have those normal stages to farm xp and it doesn't matter which stage you pick you could pick the easiest one or the hardest one they give you the same amount of xp per stamina spent so it doesn't matter if you are a whale or day one player or a completely new player you'll be able to level up just as fast ideally just equip a weapon with a sigil boost on your team at least one if you can equip more then it's even better but at least one and you'll be fine also it's that's only one event where it's faster and more efficient to do it solo than co-op because you can just speed up the battle and you can't do it in, in co-op then we have also this once a day free stage so stage 12 that we can only do it once a day but don't forget doing it because it gives you a lot of XP for free because it doesn't cost any stamina. Lastly, we have Gallant Baller Humus Crash. We also have gold tickets with extra rewards and event weapon formats. And those gold tickets, they have some really good rewards. So I would say this is the perfect time where you want to start grinding this event. Personally, I haven't spent any stamina tonics on this event yet. And I have only used natural stamina throughout this week and I am at level 5 for both bronze and silver tickets so you definitely don't need to grind this event very hard to be able to clear those victory draw levels we have also gotten some new battle stages EX3, Crash and also one new co-op stage to farm tickets and if you scroll down a bit in solo battles you'll see those two new farming stages to clear and we also have new free battle once a day don't forget about doing them both of them because we get quite a lot of event tickets and also those pink and yellow enhancement materials for weapons just for free but i am also gonna say this don't expect any crash guide from me because even if i level up all my characters to level 80 max out their notes i will not be able to clear it i am also surprised that ex3 battle has 300,000 recommended power they have increased difficulty by a lot and while we can't see the recommended power for Crash it now feels like it's the true content that's only, that only whales can clear or at least if you're very lucky to have the right gear over boosted enough at least but this is the first time where Crash gives me that feeling that they have increased difficulty by so much and made it so hard that only whales will have a chance to clear it. What I also don't like about this crash is that it's the first crash where they are pressuring us hard to pull on the banners. Galen Balor is weak to win, that's fine, but he also buffs his wind resistance by a lot and there are only two weapons in a game that can lower wind resistance. First Aerith's Flora Wand and then Nanaki's new banner color. We also have three elemental breach materia but it's only fire, ice and lightning. Eight months later and they, they still haven't given us the other three so we don't have a wind breach materia and essentially our only choice is either Aerith or Nanaki and ideally have also their weapons boosted high enough for better utility. Those two weapons are crucial for because Garon Balor will keep buffing its wind resistance until eventually he will become completely immune to any wind damage and he will just wipe you. I don't like this at all because it feels very much like gatekeeping. Either pull on this banner or accept you have no chance and if you don't have enough crystals then give us money. And I am not talking even about crash, it's also the EX stages. Personally I don't care it's just 200 or 400 crystals i will miss out on because I also i don't don't really care about icons either but i just refuse to spend my crystals to pull on banners i don't want to pull just because of them pressuring us this way 
I accept that I am unable to beat Crash this time and I'm perfectly fine with that, but as I said, I will not be pressured this way to spend my crystals on something I don't want to spend. They could have given us Windbridge material, at least to give people a chance, but they are not doing this, so nope, I'm fine with that, with not being able to clear Crash. Then we also have this new special pig banner, but it also means in the end they didn't give us that leaked cloud zag banner this week, but also next week we'll have that official Ever Crisis livestream, so we'll see what will really happen from now on. But back to the special pig banner, it's one of those banners where you can wishlist weapons and only they will appear, no new weapons or outfits. However, I think this banner is very skippable, because yes, if you look at the stamp sheets, uh, stamp cards, you see you, you get a lot of mithril ingots and sands or but in this banner you cannot wishlist any of those newer weapons those easter banners and slayer no nothing nothing post half anniversary so it's really just old weapons which i think makes it not worth spending your crystals on unless you really want to get some upgrades for all those old weapons lastly we have a new colosseum launch store and when you'll be doing those towers and unlocking notes for your characters, you'll get some of those time limit offers. Personally, I don't think any of those are worth it. And 4,500 4, crystals for a few gacha tickets and memory vouchers is very overpriced. As for the store, of course, uh, yeah, that's 5 star guaranteed gacha ticket for 300, that's perfect. This also seems worth it, but it's a, it's more expensive, but those two mogul boxes, I don't think that's worth it at all. It's very expensive, and even this, $70, yes, you get a lot of crystals, but only 50 of, of those astruins. In other boxes, or even paid ones, I, I'm not, I don't remember anymore, but you would get 150 of them, and it would cost... 5,000 red crystals, so this, yeah, you get a lot of crystals, but I don't think that's very good. The other ones, sure, but what I've also noticed, they have started giving us those character weapon packs in almost every store. In the past, like, few months ago, we would get them once a month, sometimes more often if there was some kind of celebration, but now it feels like we are getting those in every store every new store of the, the, those separate stores. That's a little bit surprising, but yeah, that should be it. I think I have covered everything that we have gone new. So yeah, so thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next one.